From the police state to tectonic plates, touch, sense, and tattoo take the temperature of tyranny on Freedom Frequency 1871. Coming to you live now. This is America. We have founding fathers that wrote the Constitution that we haven't lived by in 142 years. Were they serious when they said they planned on owning the weather by 2025? You guys seen what's going on outside your door lately? Need I remind you? This is America! Are y'all gonna allow it to be Russia? Hello, and welcome to Freedom Frequency 1871. This is your host, Dutch Sense. Time is 8.01 p.m. Eastern Time on March 28th, 2014. Finally here into spring. I've got my co-host, Tat. Tattooed 1009, that is. And our special co-host, return guest, Chrissy Sumer. Here with me, you guys. Hey. How you guys Chris, doing? I'm doing great. How about you, man? Oh, I'm good. I'm good. Um, you know, let me know when the site comes back up. Right now, we are experiencing a few technical difficulties on the site, but um, for listening live. But we are still recording, and this should go out to the world. You know, guys, um, I want to thank you for being with me for the past several broadcasts, the last several weeks, taking your Friday nights out uh, just to spend with me. Uh, last week, we went down the invention road. And that was wild. And, of course, I don't know how well we did getting that out to the world. And we're going to have to wait to see if, if there are any results. And that may take years to actually see if anybody actually picks any of those inventions up, decides to make them. No one contacted me. No one from any big company or anything uh, contacted us. However, uh, I was hoping that maybe somebody else, an uh, enterprising young person, might get inspired by us putting that information out. Um, also... Last week, while we were on the air, that's when the earthquakes struck in Southern California, and there was a huge thing on that. We're not going to get into earthquakes tonight, guys. I've got multiple earthquake updates out. You can go onto our websites. Um, Tat, now, Tat has some stuff on his site that you've got to see, okay? And this is Tattoot1009, and I'll spell it for you, T-A-T-O-O-T-T-1009.com. And you're going to go there and you're going to see some posts on Yellowstone. And this is very interesting, okay? And Chrissy and Tat and I were all talking about this behind the scene, that any time you mention Yellowstone, even if you're just asking a question, it goes right to the top. And that's on YouTube. That's on Godlike Productions. It's on all the conspiracy sites. However, none of the mainstream media really talking about the activity that started to occur this past week up at Yellowstone. But... Last week, right after the radio show, okay, uh, we're talking going into Saturday, a video appeared online, and it showed a bunch of bison, buffalo, running down the road at Yellowstone. And I've been to Yellowstone twice, personally, uh, stayed for multiple days each time. And that's not entirely abnormal, because there's so many bison at the park, they use the roads as a traveling path. Bison are actually fairly smart. They're not as dumb as you know, your standard cow. Bison are fairly smart, and they're wild, and they follow paths. And so to see them running down the road was not shocking at the time. Okay, we didn't put those videos out, and we were just making note of those occurring on YouTube, those videos. But then a few days later, earthquake swarm strikes directly inside of the Yellowstone caldera. And it was, I think, weren't they all at like three miles deep, four miles deep, Tat? Two of them were 3.1 miles. And one was four miles. Exactly. Yeah. And that's the magma chamber, guys. And they've uh, found out that the magma chamber goes from the park all the way west through Idaho and terminates through southwest Idaho at the border of Oregon. That's how big the underground magma chamber is there. And in central Idaho, going east into the park, a flurry of earthquakes hit. Um, When that happened, there was another earthquake that happened in Southern California at a dormant volcano. It's unnamed volcano. I went and looked it up. Where's this earthquake happening out there in California? And there's a volcano. And it's clearly one. Took screenshots of it. No name associated with it. It's back in the back country. And 
uh, I issued an alert telling the people, look, okay, we've got earthquakes happening at Yellowstone. We've got earthquakes happening at a dormant, unnamed volcano in Southern California. We're going to need to watch Salton Sea, which is south of that area, just to, by a few hundred miles. Uh, Salton Sea is a new volcano, quote unquote, still active, elevated by the USGS, um, for activity. And that was two and a half, three days ago I issued that alert. Last night, Salton Sea got a swarm of earthquakes. It's still ongoing right now. And that's just one area out of like 10 that I named over the past two weeks. I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but all the areas were hit except for Greece and Turkey. The 12 other areas named were hit in the past two for uh, earthquake forecast, which means there's some legitimacy to that that needs to be looked into a little bit more, and we can refine that process down. Um, also, in Earth Changes News, uh, Chrissy and Tat, did you guys hear about the hurricane or the cyclone that blew up right around the search area for the missing jet? Yeah, I did hear about it. Yes. <laughs> How mm. convenient. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, well, it went away within uh, – it first popped up. They were going to do the search. It blew in. They canceled the search. And then the next day, guess what? It's gone. Completely vaporized. I've even posted screenshots of the vaporization as it was happening, as the top sheared off and the storm just literally spun into nothing. And it got clear right after they canceled the search. Right after it blew through, of course, to sink all any possible evidence of anything. Now, we won't even get into that. that you know, we spent the last two and a half, three weeks talking about this you know, craziness that's been going on. I would like to make note of your co-host, Chrissy, Monty. Yes. Um, guys, his video, he put out a video this past week, which you've got to go see. I think it's in the 100,000 view range now on YouTube. It went viral. <laughs> yep. And um, he covers an aspect which I think more, more people need to look into, which is the possibility that the plane was landed somewhere that was friendly, quote unquote, to our side. And that would be Diego Garcia Air Base. And we can't really go into that. I'll let Monty maybe possibly go into that since uh, he had such success getting that video out this past week. 176,000. Um, <clears throat> well, at the very least, it should, you know, we should be asking questions because if any plane was flying near that base, they should have known it was there at the very least. It's well, like they, a, a top secret well, base. Just, just, just like Monty has said before in a previous video, or last week on the radio show, he's right. They know where those satellites, those satellites know where that plane was. There's no mm -hmm. doubt about that. They know exactly where the planes went down. If it went down, they know exactly where it went. We have the technology, and those pictures, they shown us of those you know, space pictures where they show come down and look like it looks like little particles in the water. They got better stuff than that. They can take a picture of a face from space. So that's I don't right. want to hear that, that they can't see nothing. Come on now. That, that's junk. That's right. I agree. They can uh, see, and we've all heard the, the term, they can see the head of a dime from space. And they can't. That's confirmed. That's uh, going back to the 1980s even. That was uh, a possibility. Now with digital photography and, uh, of course, advanced optics, <laughs> there is no question that someone somewhere in our government and other governments, Russia and China, most likely know exactly where the plane is. Now, it is confirmed. And again, I've got to state this for the record. It is confirmed. 20 employees from the company Freescale RF, radio frequency, Freescale RF, specializes in radar, S-band and L-band. Okay, sound familiar, guys? S-band radar, uh, that's what we've been talking about for the last two and a half years. Specializing in 2.45 gigahertz wireless transmission and plasma generation. And on February 25th, just a few weeks before the plane went missing, Freescale announced its new advanced super small microprocessor. It's like a little computer itself. And it fits in the divot of a golf ball. And guess what? On Freescale's site, they say, we're going to be rolling out product demonstrations of this new chip in March. Now, you got to ask yourself, what were 20 
employees from Freescale RF doing in Malaysia traveling to Beijing? Well, obviously, they were demonstrating that new chip, just like Freescale said that they were going to be doing, which means not only were there 20 radar, radio frequency chip specialists on board, but there's also the chips themselves, the demo models. You've got to figure those 20 people are traveling with the chips that they're demoing to the rest of the tech world, which means that this plane loaded. It's like, guys, in the 1980s, and I was growing up in the 80s, so I, I remember this. There, were, um, there was a high demand for nuclear engineers, especially coming out of the Soviet Union. People used to get shot trying to escape from the Soviet Union through the Berlin Wall, for instance. You know, a lot of younger people don't remember this stuff. But you can imagine a plane load of nuclear physicists demonstrating some new nuclear technology goes missing in a nuclear explosion. Imagine that. You'd say, what? The chances of that are insane. Now, let me propose this plane here to you. A plane load of radio frequency radar specialists goes missing on radar. It's equally as preposterous. Right. So who would take the plane? (laughs) Yeah. Who would take the plane? And that goes back to the U.S. and Diego Garcia because the 20 people that are on board were 20 Chinese origin people. Now, they weren't U.S. citizens, but they're living in the U.S., working at Freescale, and they're there internationally to spread that chip. Yeah, they're so, spreading the chip, and Russia's over there, and the United States are talking about <clears throat> thermonuclear war back and forth at each other, their little game. And then this happens. Uh, uh, does China and Russia, I mean, uh, the United States and Russia not want everyone to know about their little secret? Because we all know that Russia had radio frequency harp or the woodpecker, if you whichever you want to call it, first. Yes. And that's just the people that were on board. 20 of the people who were on board were confirmed specialist in the well in in radar and radio frequency and then they go missing on radar um it's highly suspect could the u.s have taken them because they were going to china who knows that really becomes down to which superpower grabbed them all right it would be the russians the chinese or the u.s all three have a vested interest in frequency development of next generation technology that's all being developed right now it makes sense to me that that plane did not go missing it didn't crash. It didn't blow up. That it was taken somewhere. And they're pretty much admitted that it was taken somewhere. And look, like I said we weren't going to talk about it. Here we are talking about it for the last 10 minutes. It's a really intriguing subject. It's a really crazy topic. And then to have that mystery, freakish cyclone kick up and blow directly over the area. I mean, come on. What more of a weather modification confirmation do we need? And it was called Jillian. Everybody said Gilligan. And I said, no, 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 no. Jillian. Like Gilligan's Island. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, ironically, Tat, last week you said the professor, didn't you? You did. It was last week's I radio did. show. You called me the professor, and we were talking about Gilligan's Island associated with the plane. And then along comes Cyclone Jillian. And everybody thought <laughs> it was Gilligan. Wow. What are the chances? That's a synchronicity and a half right there. Mm-hmm. Um, what else happened? God, whatever, what, what happened this past week, guys? I mean, this conspiracy theory stuff, man. We can get into it. we got a video we're going to play here in a second. But that's the, the point of tonight's broadcast is we're going to be addressing this whole truth or conspiracy theory thing that the mainstream media just seems to, whenever they're referring to any of us, they refer to us as conspiracy theorists. Me included, Tat included, Dabu included, any one of these people. They're all labeled as conspiracy theorists, even if what they're reporting on is correct or what I'm reporting on is absolutely correct. Now, NBC did it to me. Well, well, you, you, you said it right there in a the nutshell. Even though you're telling people about the law of the land, you're still called a conspiracy theorist. Yeah. Because yeah. the great Obama stands up and says the oldest dem- constitutional democracy, really? Are we? No, we're not. We're a republic. I rest my case on that. I mean, that's just all there is to it. 
Well, they'll call you a conspiracy theorist if you're talking about anything controversial that was not released by them directly. So well, they're I mean, not going to release that because they don't want nobody to know that. <laughs> Right, so they shuffle 1871 into a conspiracy theory hole when it's literally just, it's a fact. I mean, the U.S. government had to form into a corporation. We were talking about this right before we got on the air. The U.S. government had to form into a corporation in order to receive the money and to make its own money. It had to form into its own corporate entity to do business with any other corporate entities. It's just that simple. So it's not a conspiracy that 1871 happened, but they've they've pigeonholed the issue into a new world order issue where if you believe in abolishing the act of 1871 you're somehow some kind of you know anti-police state weirdo and well they've done in, that they've done that to religion if you're a, a christian you're something you you know you're you're freaky if you're a constitutionalist you believe in the constitution you're a conspiracy theorist uh if you believe in that in 1871, you're a conspiracy theorist. If if you believe in anything that the mainstream don't feed you every day, constantly, all of their lies and their bull crap, then you're a conspiracy theorist. Mm -hmm. Especially well, if you listen to Bill O'Reilly. <laughs> <laughs> he sure seems to level that out. And they all do. The MSNBC hosts are just so smug and arrogant. They had a smug storm occurring over their heads as they were sitting there ripping truthers a new one for looking into things like like for instance this we'll watch this video in a second but she brings up um the boston bombing and here's just one example i'm going to give you guys and maybe throughout the broadcast tonight we can dig up this video um she brings up the boston bombing and, and rips truthers for believing it's a conspiracy no one knows and i've never seen this video put out by anybody except a few people on youtube of the people that got dusted after the explosion supposedly occurred at Boston bombing, we have video evidence, and I'm serious, proof that someone ran up with a big old jar bag of dust and threw it on all the people laying on the ground that were acting like they were blown up. And it wasn't, a, it they, wasn't a great big like towel or something. It was full of dust, and they just snapped it, and dust just went all, all over the everybody. Towel. The towel, that's right. It was a towel. Um, they come up and go, poof, and antique everybody there. Now, antiquing is a, is a prank that you play on your college dorm roommate who's passed out drunk on the couch, and you take a, a thing of flour, and you come up and puff them in the face, and they look like an antique uh, work of art. And they antiqued these people and then told them to act like they were hurt. Someone somewhere completely faked the Boston bombing. It's proved. Now we can even go further, and we'll have to watch this video because I'm getting worked up even talking about what this chick's talking about on MSNBC. But the evidence for the backpacks, you guys remember this? Chris, are you there? Yes. You remember this video? It was, um, I think it was Dabu7, okay, on YouTube, put out a video where he's showing security camera footage of the people running away from the explosion. And you slow it down, and you see them. There's Joker, the Jokar, Sarnev, running away with the crowd after the explosion occurred. Whatever blew up, it's some kind of pyrotechnics. He's running away with 100 other people, and he's wearing his backpack. He's got the hat on. He's got the jacket on. It's him. And he's running away wearing his backpack after the explosions. Now, they told us that Joker and his brother left their backpacks filled with explosives. And they even showed the exploded backpack. Now, on the backpack, there was a white tag at the top, specific shape. It turns out, again, Dabu7 found another video of security camera footage showing these men wearing khaki pants, khaki combat boots, and they, the, the pants were not tucked in, so the pants are down over the boots. You can barely tell they're wearing khaki combat boots, but they are. They're wearing each wearing a black jacket and a black shirt, and they have the backpacks with the tag on the top. Yep. It's undeniable. Yep. And after the explosion, you see those guys running away with the khakis without their backpacks. They were black water. Yeah. Yep. They they? That's exactly yeah. right. And that's proved. These are all proved facts. 
MSM, mainstream media, apparently is either in on it or completely ignorant. They're not ignorant. They don't know it because there's nobody in their right mind believes that a man with two legs blown off with no blood up underneath the wheelchair, no blood running off of his limbs at all, believes that that man was awake holding up his cut off leg and he's not passed out. Why and then when he goes to the hospital, he looks entirely different, like a whole different guy with different color hair, but, but then he wasn't antique and it wasn't curly as it was. And he has one of his legs back in a cast. Uh, who was carrying the other leg? The one that was the most, you know, had the most bone sticking out of it. Um, I, I just, you know, mainstream media actually put that video out. They had a that, big interview with the guy. That was done on purpose for shock and awe. They showed us that in HD. Why would they put somebody whose legs were blown off in a wheelchair? They would bleed out. Exactly. Run them, run them down the street, no less, in front of all the cameras yeah. who were sitting there. Yeah, well, all the cameras could see, too. That's another thing. That, that was done on purpose. They want It was shock and awe. They wanted us to see that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, folks, in case you don't know what we're talking about, there at the Boston bombing, there's a famous scene. You may have been tuned out. You may not even know very much about the Boston bombing if you're not from the States. Um, there's a guy who supposedly had both his legs blown off. The emergency officials, we're talking cops and paramedics, have him in a wheelchair with his legs blown off, fake arteries. And this is all fake because there's no blood dripping out of him. His arteries are blown off. His legs are, are literally, the, the guts of the legs supposedly are hanging out. There's no blood. And, and they bones. put him in the and they wheel him down the street. Now, there's ambulances back behind him. They've got stretchers. They, they don't have to wheel him down the street. However, they do. Then, what, a week later, two weeks later, after everybody's kind of calmed down over the Boston bombing incident, they go to this guy at the hospital, and he's got one leg. He's a, yeah, he's they a got it veteran. In a cast. Yeah, he's a veteran missing one leg. Well, wait a second. Both were blown off. Did they re somehow magically reattach the completely blown off leg? Connect all the arteries and everything? I mean, where was all the blood? That's just one instance. Now, how many minutes do we have till break? Ah, oh, we only have seven minutes. When we get back from break, we're going to play this video. It's eight minutes long. We're not going to play it all the way through. We're going to stop at each conspiracy that this chick brings up on MSNBC, <laughs> and we're going to go over the facts that we know that basically debunk everything that this woman is saying. Now, it's going to take a while. It'll probably take 30 minutes of us talking. Um, we'll probably get to callers in the last half hour, if we can. It's going to take us a while to go through this video. So if you're going to call in, we'll take callers at the last half hour. So we still have another hour to go of us talking about conspiracy theories. Yes. Are you scared? <laughs> Are you? <laughs> no, are you scared? <laughs> get your coffee. Get your nanobots. Get your triple trouble. And we're going to go have a nice little delve triple down trouble. conspiracy lane. I'll tell you what. This video that we're going to watch, let me just describe it to you. Smug MSNBC anchor talking to a guy who's wrote a book on conspiracies from the Obama administration. And they're talking about how dangerous truthers are who perpetuate dangerous conspiracy theories. Then, after discussing conspiracy theories for six or seven minutes, they go down the two that just blow me away that they call them conspiracies, Santa Claus and the Tooth Fairy. <laughs> It, yeah, exactly. And, and they, they bring up this stuff and they bring out an Obama guy for Obama. But the main one of the biggest things that caught my attention about the video itself is about Obama's birth certificate. And what happened the same day earlier that day was that Sheriff O'Pow has come out with some DVDs for everybody to watch and to see. And I posted that as well for everybody to see the video that they've posted and the one that's yet to come. 
about more evidence about the birth certificate, the social security numbers, all that stuff that they everyone has said for, from the very beginning when he first started running for president, found out that all of the documents that he has provided are all forgeries. They're all fake. But no, no one wants to put two and two together here. Why well, is the man still here? You're a conspiracy theorist if you question it. Oh, yeah, I, got, I know. I got a message from the U.S. Congress for you, Tat. This is from a congressman. Go F yourself. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I went off on him a little bit, too. I, I don't like him neither. He's a, he, he's a real... He's a real piece of cake. I mean, somebody ought to actually take his name and his address and his telephone number and post it up all over the God's creation, and everybody ought to give him a call and uh, say, how are you doing? Do you like your Constitution, or do you like your corporate entity that you belong to? And be nice, those, though. Don't be mean. Don't, don't, don't cause no hate and discontent. Just be nice if you can. Be like me. Be nice if you can. But if you're mad, I'm, you know, be careful about when you make that telephone call because you don't want to get in trouble. Yeah. You don't want to get in trouble. Um, if you're upset, you can verbalize that without harassing someone. However, for those of you guys who don't know, there's a U.S. was he a senator? No, congressman. Um, put out. I, I don't know what he did uh, actually to get on TV, but he was apparently at some kind of press conference or walking through a press area. And here we have an Infowars reporter, and I forget the guy's name. What, do you, Chrissy? Do you know the guy's name? The ball? No, guy? not not right off. Not right I off. I don't know his name either, but I know who you're talking about. Dan Badanti. Yeah, that's it. Yes, Dan that's Bedanti. it. Oh. Okay. And Dan Badanti, God bless him. He's um, a, a very outspoken InfoWars reporter. And he, at the Boston bombing of all things, he trashed the news conference, rightfully so, and um, raised the question of false flags in front of all the reporters and all the talking heads. And they basically have sent him from time to time to do some bulldog work for InfoWars. And here's Badanti asking the congressman about or telling him you're not going to infringe on our second amendment rights the congressman looks at, at him looks i think he even looks at the camera and says go f yourselves and he doesn't say f he says go fuck yourselves yeah it's they the got congressman. a bleep in it bleep go f bleep you know i think i watched was it free radio revolution did a video covering this and with his commentary it's funny <laughs> you know we should watch that one instead when we get back you know, they're both the same <laughs> length. They're both the same length. One is filled with cuss words. It's worth the watch. <laughs> it, it's his radio show, though. But we could give him a shout out and play it, maybe just a portion of it. I don't know. Maybe we'll do that when we get back from the break. But, guys, what we're talking about here, again, is this um, smug attitude from people in power towards those of us who are concerned about certain underhanded activities that are occurring. Now, some people call those conspiracies. Well, a conspiracy is nothing more than a group of people working together to a certain political end. That's it. So, I mean, you know, conspiracy could be anything from, uh, you know, a, a JFK shooting to just is McDonald's uh, conspiring to cater to young children in their advertising. So conspiracy theories, when they go to conspiracy fact, that's when I get involved. A lot of people see my anti-Illuminati logo. This will take us great right out to break in one minute. My anti-Illuminati logo stands for conspiracy buster. It means no conspiracy, just like no smoking. You put a big red bar over it and say no. I don't stand for conspiracies. I get to the bottom of it, whether it's true or whether it's false. And that then determines what you believe. We'll get back after the break, guys. Much love. America, America. Listen to the sound. Welcome back to Freedom Frequency 1871. This is your host, Dutch Sense, 
and I have Tattooed and Chrissy here with me, co-hosting this wonderful Friday night, March 28th, 2014, and the time is 8.35 p.m. Eastern Time. For the last 30 minutes, kind of been just running down eh, the recent headlines, and then we got into this whole conspiracy theory thing. This conspiracy theorist moniker, this label that gets put on to most of us who cover, well, strange goings on that we find and try to bring it's, to the world. It's just memory lane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It really is memory lane. You know, the, the last three years of craziness, you know, I mean, if you're an outside observer, let's say you are this producer at MSNBC who got a phone call from their boss telling them that they need to look into these conspiracy theorists and make sure to give them a good one-two punch. Now, the one-two punch, um, at the end of this segment, right before commercial break, maybe we'll play the last few minutes of um, Free Radio Revolution's video. You guys got to hear this. He addresses the senator, the congressman, who told Badanti from InfoWars to go F himself and, and he's really telling you and me and all the people in the United States, anybody who's concerned about their Second Amendment rights, go fuck yourselves. He said it, the senator, congressman, I'm sorry, I keep making that mistake. And that lets you know that the people who are in charge are arrogant, smug sons of bitches. And that's putting it nicely. Sons of the bitch. Go look it up. That's really what it is. And the bitch being going back to ancient times. Um, we've got a video that I think we should get into here. This is the Mox News video. And if you guys aren't on YouTube, you don't know who Mox News is. Mox News is a guy, a single dude, who puts out mainstream media clips that he takes from cable, whether it be from NBC, CBS, CNN, MSNBC. And um, he's caught some serious hell for doing it. Um, he's gotten in trouble. He's gotten copyright infringement notifications sent to his house. And he's entirely viewer supported. He works for donations only. So if you can donate to Mox News, it's worth it because he keeps doing it all day long. Um, this clip is MSNBC ripping us truthers and conspiracy theorists, a new one. And go ahead and cue that up. We'll just have you stop it when we get to the point where we can't take anymore. Kind of like when it starts to boil in my head, that's when I will say, hold on, pause. OK, so we'll go get right into that. The plane is hidden under an invisibility cloak with high-tech electronic weapon systems. Or it is secretly hiding in North Korea. Or in the expert opinion of one Malaysian shaman, it has been hijacked by elves and is suspended in midair. Or according to one of the most powerful media moguls on earth, a man named Rupert Murdoch, world seems transfixed by 777 disappearance, maybe no crash but stolen, effectively oh, hidden. Pause. Perhaps in northern Pakistan. Like okay, you right there, guys. They start off the, this whole thing framing the MH370 missing airliners debacle. And they cite everything from elves, which they'll get into later in the broadcast, calling Santa and the elves a conspiracy. But they mention Rupert Murdoch. And Rupert Murdoch basically, I think, trying to tell the world that plane was taken. Now, he says... To a different location, of course. He adds his own little spin on the end, but that the plane was taken. Rupert Murdoch, the owner of Fox News, guys. I mean, we're talking one of the most influential men in the world saying the plane is taken, most likely. Tweeting it. Anyways, just wanted to name that out. Um, carry on. Like Bin Laden. Those are just some of the multitudes of conspiracy theories regarding the disappearance of Malaysian Airlines Flight 370. Though new evidence would seem to point in a direction other than Pakistan or elves, changing the mind of conspiracy theorists is often very hard to do. As with the birthers who deny President Obama's citizenship, or the truthers who perpetuate the theory that the United States orchestrated the attacks on September 11th, whoa, 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 these whoa, kinds whoa, of theories whoa, whoa, are whoa, unusual. Whoa. <laughs> this chick's going way too fast. I'm telling you, she's reading a script that was written by a producer. Now you think she, she's reading it like she wrote it, right? She's putting her own spin on it, her own thing. 
but it's really a jackass producer at MSNBC that's actually coming up with the script that she's reading. And they just lumped in. Tat, did you hear that? They lumped in Wait. the birth certificate with 9-11. Oh, yeah. I know. But, <laughs> hey, guys, I, I just got to say one thing about 9-11. Uh, we're not going to really talk about 9-11, but jet fuel does not get hot enough to burn or weaken steel that thick to do any damage. It doesn't burn nearly hot enough to weaken it at all. And the birth certificate, hey, it's fake. I'm sorry. It is. Rest my case. I mean, there's proof. You got the sheriff and you got his cold case, case posse. They looked into it. They went to expert opinions and said that it is bogus. Every time that anything about the certificates come out, you had Sandy Hook. Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. Let me back up. You had the Batman shooting first, and then you had Sandy Hook. And then the Boston bombing. All of them were to take away the heat of the birth certificate. Okay, we can go on now. Every time there's a birth certificate breaking news story, something major happens to distract. I I do agree with you on that, Ted. That is the weirdest thing in the world that that occurs. Um, You know, you just brought up several different false flag attacks, okay? Um, You know, this... This, I, I, I can't even go there. Um, I really want to play this video here. Hold on one second, guys. I've got an echo coming in my, my ear. Somebody got their microphone turned up to the speaker. Nope, I don't. Wow. Okay, this might be Skype. It's echoing. It's feeding back in my ear. Sorry, guys, I'm having a real hard time hearing. Okay, um, let's just go ahead and play the video. That might be able to give me some time to sort this out. ...resistant to correction. As legal scholar and former Obama administration official Cass Sunstein writes in his new book, Conspiracy Theories and Other Dangerous Ideas, conspiracy theorists believe that the agents of the conspiracy have unusual powers so that apparently contrary evidence can be seen as a product of the conspiracy itself. Joining me now is Harvard Law School professor and author of the new book, Conspiracy Theories and Other Dangerous Ideas, the man himself. Hold it a minute. Hold it a minute. Oh, she just said that they have special powers. Wait a minute. No, they don't have special powers. You got that wrong. They have democracy powers that is ruining our freedom of speech our Second Amendment, and our sovereignty rights of being a republic. Now you can play on. Am I to believe it's you, or is it just a hologram that appears to be you? No, it's me, but of course I would say that. (laughs) Right, exactly. Um, Okay, so we are in a a moment right now where this book, as usual, you are are part of, you are hitting the cultural nail on the head as we talk about what happened to this plane. All these insane theories have been out there. Um, And I I guess in, in your book, you write about just how hard it is to debunk conspiracy theories, because those who believe in them, and I will quote you, are unlikely to give respectful attention to the debunkers who in their eyes may, after all, be agents or dupes of those responsible for the conspiracy in the first place. So from your in your expert opinion, what is the best way to to shatter a theory that has no basis in reality? Pause. There are two things that tend to work or that. OK, what is the best way to shatter a conspiracy theory? Well, guys, considering that's half the job we do on YouTube every week from everything from fake Fukushima explosions to debunking UFO shaky hand cam footage that we are ice on. Oh God. Ice on Jesus, man. You want to talk? Don't even get me going on ice on. I'll start getting a little upset. I lost a lot of of viewers. Nobody, everybody to remember. That's okay. Go keep going. No, no, no. I need to say this. I lost a lot of viewers and some very close friends over me saying that ice on wasn't going to hit Earth at Christmas and cause a rapture. And I caught hell for saying that. 
Okay, we've got a problem in the community of people believing conspiracy, weird conspiracy theories like nanobots in Pepsi. That was Rev. Michelle Hopkins. Okay, a lot of these religious channels, the people that were pushing the comet Ison going to hit planet Earth with a debris field, that was BP Earthwatch. He also makes sure to mention in each video how you need to come to Christ. Same with Rev. Michelle. Same with the other guy who put out the fake Fukushima story last year. What do they all have in common? Come to the Lord. And I'm Christian. I really profess my belief in Jesus Christ because I'm a sinner and I need it. I'm not one of these pious, pie-in-the-sky e-preachers. What? Are you serious? Right now? What? <laughs> Guess what? Bison are running out of Yellowstone or what? <laughs> they could just be running down the road, dude. That's what I said in my post, but everybody ran with that like the bison are running out of Yellowstone. We asked the question, are the animals trying to tell us something? That goes around as, oh, man, everybody, godlike productions. Yellowstone's going to erupt. Here we are putting out stuff saying it's going to be an earthquake. No eruption. But nobody would know that. They see a Yellowstone headline and run with it. It's fear porn. It's conspiracy theory. Let's get back into it. Play. At least have a probability of working. One is if you can appeal in a way that affirms the basic beliefs or commitments of the people who believe in the conspiracy so that at a level of abstraction, they may believe something that everyone believes, like wrongdoing is, uh, should be punished or something. And if you appeal to them, that, that can work. Also, if you can get people who are allied with them in one or another respect, that in the, in the sense that they are kind of uh, credible, in, in a group of people who find most people incredible, then Pause. that can work to develop. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Pause. Idaho Picker. I, I got something to say. Well, what, about well, real that. quick, what real said. quick. Real quick, bro. Idaho Picker approached me to go to their conspiracy conferences because I'm credible in his eyes. According to him, we want you to join the conspiracy conference with us and the other guys. Come join. Why? Because you are credible. People listen to you. Now, I'm sorry, and I didn't mean to interrupt. Also you a to say it. Form, it's also a form of brainwashing. Exactly what he's talking about is exactly what the mainstream media does to us. It's brainwash us. Right. Yeah. It's why they'll roll out Michael Jordan to endorse a pair of shoes. Celebrity endorsement. It's a, it's a media tactic, an advertising tactic. That is, it's just, it's a, an appeal to authority. It's actually called a logical fallacy. If you, if you take debate and you debate people in college or high school or whatever, um, there are certain things that will cost you points in the debate. And one of those things would be a logical fallacy. And logical fallacies are anything from an appeal to authority saying, oh, well, so-and-so said this and they're credible because they are so-and-so. They are the best basketball player in the world. Therefore, their endorsement of this sneaker must be better than the average Joe who's saying it's not. Why? Because Michael Jordan knows what he's talking about. It's a logical fallacy. Anyways, carry on. Play. A conspiracy theory. Do you feel like we are in a moment right now? And maybe, you know, a lot of people will say under this president because there has been such a, it's been, a, a, he has in some ways uh, exposed cultural rifts that exist in American society, that we are in a, a period where conspiracy theory is flourishing. And I will point to Donald Trump, who is taken seriously in certain conservative circles and still maintains that the president was not born here, is one of the leading birthers after the president re released his birth certificate, Trump said he would have to check out the certificate himself and then wondered why the president didn't just release it a long time ago. It hold feels it minute, like there's more of this. Okay, she's talking about Trump being one of the leading people in the birth certificate. No, he stopped pushing the birth certificate after Obama showed his birth certificate, which is a forgery. Let's get that straight, too. That's your first lie, well, of many but this is one of your biggest lies to protect Obama's birth certificate. You can continue now. Out Hawaii. There. Real quick, Hawaii. Guys, think about it. Think about every like joke movie where somebody gets a fake ID. 
you know, like nine times out of ten, they're showing Hawaii as the place that the fake I- – McLovin. Remember the, what was that movie that had McLovin in it? He got the ID that said McLovin. Mm-hmm. You guys remember, remember I this? I remember the name of it. <laughs> yeah, and th- that ID was from Hawaii. Why? Because Hawaii is one of the places where it was known throughout the last 20, 30 years as a place that it's easy to forge your identity because of native populations coming into the U.S. through China and Japan and native Hawaiians. Anyways. Oh, and you say you brought up Hawaii. Let's don't forget the lady that released his birth certificate and said that it was legal. And she is the only one on the plane that died when it crashed. I forgot all about that. I should have mentioned it. I'm so sorry. I forgot about that too, guys, and viewers might not know. The lady that Tat's talking about was in a plane crash in the ocean, and there's footage on YouTube and other mainstream media of the plane crashing and her floating in the water with a group of other people, and she mysteriously turns up missing, dead. It's just, you know... (laughs) Uh, Are they covering their tracks? I don't know, but if I was a betting man, I believe I'd put 500 on, especially if it was 500 to 1. Because I think I'd win. I really do. You can continue playing. There has been. I think we're seeing a lot of it, and there are a couple of reasons. One is in a time of economic difficulty or in a time when things are going wrong in very visible ways, like with the plane, for example, and the tragic events in Benghazi, people try to seize on uh, something awful, which may in fact be causal. It may have produced the bad outcome, or it may be just be mad, made up. So if you're scared or if you're angry, and people, a lot of people are, a uh, conspiracy theory seems appealing. The the other thing that I think is contributing to what you describe, I think you're, you're right on on that, is uh, social media, which are on balance a terrific thing for freedom and uh, information getting out there. But if you have isolated networks, they can be kind of echo chambers. And if they're politically polarized and full of anger or distrust, then they can start believing something that's baseless or ridiculous. Okay, yeah. pause. What- All right. Now, they just brought up social media, and this is something that I think Chrissy and Tat would both agree with me on as well as many of my viewers. They are correct in as much as that social media does aid in the perpetuation of bogus conspiracy theories. They're the ones that go right to the top. They get the viral views. This is what we personally, the the researchers, what they call the conspiracy theorists, us, are fighting every day. We're fighting the disinfo and the BS on YouTube, and we're catching nothing but hell from our viewers for pointing out, well, I mean, look, look at what happened with me and Comet Ison. Oh, Dutch, how dare you? Comet Ison's going to hit. How do you know it's not going to hit? And I'm like, guys, it's vaporizing. We're watching it. I know you're seeing BP tell you that it's going to hit, but <laughs> here's the feed. And it got something like 200 thumbs down. People don't want to be told that they're being foolish. And that they're buying into something that's stupid or – and look what Sheila Aliens did, right? She made a whole video where she went off on me for going off on the community for saying that it's not plastic snow. And I'm some kind of jerk for talking down to my viewers because of what? Because I'm tired of hearing about this info. How dare you, Dutch? How dare you? You should perpetuate the lie or at least be nice to him. No. No, 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 no. Not anymore. That may have maybe used to fly in 2010 back before shit hit the fan internationally and globally and politically and environmentally. Back when your biggest problem was the BP oil spill and whether George Bush was going to still be around. You know, Um, things have changed, guys, in case you haven't noticed. And I'm talking to my viewers here. I'm really not talking to Tat and Chrissy. You guys know. So anyways, they bring up social media. This is something we deal with every day. The disinfo on social media. This is what gives them ammo. When they see Dabu7 or Rev Michelle or any one of the other people putting out this questionable news, they frame us all as being these gigantic douchebags, which technically I don't blame them for doing because I do it myself and I got blamed for it by Sheila, for instance, for going off on the community for being a bunch of gigantic douchebags and believing a bunch of stupid shit. But... 
that's the community that we're dealing with. Those are the people that are willing to believe there's something going on that's not good. So, you know, am I being harsh? I guess I am, but I'm being harsh on myself, guys. I'm part of that crowd. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm going off. I'm looking at the man in the mirror as I'm talking here. So uh, let's go ahead. and The play only, only thing that I wish that we could do with the community, with everybody, including those guys, because those guys are part of this. Yes. Guys, we got a problem. You know we have a problem or you wouldn't be doing what you're doing. I'm talking to all of y'all now. Everybody that knows me, the ones that hate me, the ones that love me, or just don't care nothing about me. I, I, it's not that. We have a problem in this country where our sovereignty right has been gone for 143 years and some even before then we have more problems than just the act of 1871 but that's one hell of a start if we the people start pushing enough information and we come up with something where we all stayed home for a day just one that's a lot of money people a lot of money that the government would have to stop and say, hey, these people are going to cut off our funds if we don't start paying attention. Agreed. We can't do anything. We can't physically fight them, mm -mm. but we can turn their money off. We can stay at home. We can stop their crimes by cutting their money off and then abolishing them. By getting rid of them and getting rid of the corporation, not necessarily get rid of the corporation, but get rid of the corporation that is in control of our country. That's right. It's it's going to require a coordinated effort across the entire what we would call the truth community, which has been falling apart due to internal struggles. And, you know, all the guys that I named, we've had these big, huge falling out and massive online wars from channels and you know, Dabu and BP and Jim Lee and all these other guys, I would like to offer, again, one final olive branch to every person involved and say, look, there's certain things that we can all agree that we, that we don't like, okay? Whether that's weather modification or whether that's uh, the government lying to us, there are certain banners that everybody can get behind, whether or not you agree with somebody personally or what's happened in the past, what, who said what about who, you know, how you were mean below a video or in comments or said some nasty stuff to each other. This is like child, heart, child um, schoolyard playground stuff, and there's big activity happening that we all know is going down, this police state stuff. How many videos is Tat going to post showing a police officer doing some horrible thing to somebody or some animal or something. How many of those are we going to let fly while we're all sitting having a sandbox fight over XYZ on YouTube? There was just another one of those today. I just posted a new one today. Young girl kind of look a little bit like Chrissy. She's a little bit younger maybe than Chrissy, but hitting the head with a baton for pushing a woman off of her because she was drinking and he hits her in the head with a baton and, and messes her forehead up, knocks her out. I mean... All police are given tasers these days. There's no reason to use excessive beatdown force when you have the capability of completely stunning someone. Beatdowns are no longer... Well, I mean, they're being used daily now, but they should no longer be used unless of last possible resort. Now, we got break in like 30 seconds. Guys, if you want to call in, 567-314-9296. Uh, Again, 567-314-9296, and we'll get back after the break. All we gotta get from you is a distraction. All we gotta get from you is a surprise. All we gotta get Welcome back to Freedom Frequency 1871. This is your host, Dutch Sense. The time now is 9.05 p.m. Eastern Time on March 28, 2014. And, you know, guys, <laughs> this has been kind of fun to play this MSNBC BS 
and then stop it and kind of try to correct them. It's so fast that, you know, look what they're doing. They're, they're running over like 20 different topics at once and smearing each one without providing any facts. And right before the break, um, Tap brought up a good point, which is we all know there's a problem. And we've traced the source of the problem back to the corporate formation of our government in 1871 and other acts previously that led up to that. But the U.S. forming into a corporation is, well, what leads to B-1 bombers and out-of-control cops. If they were charities, if they were forced to operate like a nonprofit and they had to raise money in order to operate, imagine if your local police department had to raise money beforehand to pay for those police officers. Beforehand. Every year, they'd have to go back and do a fundraiser. Will you please donate towards the police this year? And you'd say, uh, yeah, yeah, right. I got pulled over 20 times, and you guys were total jerks. You beat up those 10 women and shot those four people. We're not donating to you. You're all unemployed. Oh, you're not going to have cops. Well, we'll hire Blackwater. We'll get better service. You know? At least Blackwater, there's a paycheck involved where they're not going to kill you. They, they know they're not going <laughs> to shoot their paymasters. They want to get paid at the end of the week. But we're talking about this mainstream media, this Microsoft NBC, MSNBC. <laughs> Free Radio Revolution brings up the best. He's like, that's like combining the two worst things in the world, Microsoft and NBC together into one. <laughs> and people tune into that for information. Um, I used to. I used to tune into MSNBC and Fox and CNN and I mean, I still go to those places to check them, but, you know, it's not – you've got to take what they say just like what you would take a conspiracy theorist online as, the, as what they say. You have to be extremely skeptical, look into everything they say, and notice that both people do the same thing. They don't leave links down below. <laughs> whether it's the mainstream media sitting there bitching at us about truth or stuff or whether it's weird conspiracy people sitting there talking about reptilians and holograms. They're not providing any links to back up their, their case. They're just providing a 9-11 video showing a hologram of a plane. Or they're providing a, uh, a past life regression on a reptilian. I mean, that's where this madness comes from. That's why conspiracy theory gets labeled as such. The movie Conspiracy Theory with Mel Gibson and Julia Roberts is about a guy named Jerry who believes... The United States has an earthquake weapon in the space shuttle that was being used to target the president. Now, here I am in real life, Dutch sense, saying that there are earthquake weapons and that earthquakes are following the president. <laughs> I didn't know that that was the plot of the movie. I'd seen it before, but I guess it just got filed away in the back of my head. What are the chances, right? Here I am, the conspiracy theorist. Maybe that's why they call me a conspiracy theorist. Because I'm talking about weird science. Maybe that's why they denied fracking. It sounded weird in 2011. Pumping water into the ground can cause an earthquake. Dutch sense must be just making stuff up, right? I, I, I saw that video you shared on The Daily Show. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Oh. Oh, it's great. It's great. This is great. Um, there was a uh, Daily Show covered fracking, guys. And God bless them. They came down on the side of any one of us, which is uh, fracking is bad for the environment and the groundwater, and it's causing earthquakes. And you'll laugh if you go watch this clip because um, Exxon, or the company, the oil companies that are involved down there, um, there was a massive catastrophe that happened somebody died and they bought everybody pizza as compensation pizza and a two liter bottle of soda i mean come on so um okay you know i i'm digressing here we still have more of the clip to play before we get to the callers do you guys want to you want to play the rest of this tat i mean are you getting tired of hearing this dumb chick on msnbc recite a line like a parrot from a producer that's sitting in the back room like some gigantic jackass well we don't have to we can jump into some callers because i know we got some waiting and i know they're going to tell us that we got we got two callers waiting right now so 
it would probably be best if we just went ahead and start taking callers, I guess. What do you think? Okay, well, we'll just let you guys know. If you want to see this whole video, it's on either one of our channels, and I think Chrissy may favorite it up as well. Um, it is, uh, what is the title of the video? Let's just go ahead and get that. Um, Tap, do you have the title of the video? Uh, not that one. I have the one to mine. Okay, it's called The Truthers Who Perpetuate the Theory that the U.S. Government Orchestrated the Attacks on 9-11 on MoxNews.com. <laughs> okay, it's a huge title. Again, Or you can just tr- search Mox News and then go look at their uploads, right? Right, you could look yes. at the recent uploads and it would just look for the title, The Truthers Who Perpetuate, and you will find this video. And it's disgusting. At the end, again, I, they go into Santa Claus and they go into the Tooth Fairy um, – it's this guy's promoting a book. I mean, come on, he's promoting his own work talking about conspiracy theories. So he should be taken with the grain of salt that anybody pushing a book on conspiracy theories would. Just like Mark Dice, just like any one of the other ones, if they're pushing a book on conspiracy theories, you take that with a grain of salt because they're trying to make a buck off conspiracy theories. <laughs> That's why it's not good to charge for your information, by the way. Anyways. Um, Let's want to go to the callers. We can go to callers, man. I, I was, you know, I thought we were going to run down some more of this. This fault. We didn't even get into the LAX false dummy with the ketchup on the floor or the. Well, uh, I mean, we can we can get into that if you want to. Or uh, Bill O'Reilly with his cartoon with the, the Family Guy about the Boston bombing as well, and he said that we dubbed the video, which. I'm the one that put it out to start with, and other people cut it down to end a small piece. And the whole video, it's in the whole video, but he made it sound as if the us, the people that was on YouTube, actually took the video off of two episodes. They stated that, but then they corrected themselves and said that, you know, we... We created this out of a couple of different videos, but we didn't. It was the same video, yeah. and I, I don't, I don't understand. I mean, how can they get away with telling a ball face lie? And I will say this: I made such a big deal out of it. Bill O'Reilly got me a striker like this third day. <laughs> yeah. And you re- you really did. You got a um, a copyright strike served from them directly over that video. Now, you, some of our viewers may not know. At the time of the Boston bombing, there was a Family Guy episode where they showed people running across the it, the, the whole episode featured. It was people. it was actually the Boston Run. I mean, yeah. the Boston uh, Marathon. It yeah. was literally the Boston Marathon. They were talking about it in the cartoon. That's what it was. It was right. it was tur- it was episode fifteen Turban Cowboy. Yep. And it was in two separate parts. One was in the beginning, and the other part was towards the end. But it was in the same episode, and it was all about too about um, Islam. Mm-hmm. That right. episode. I, I had up. that full episode still. I downloaded it before they took it down. And blowing things up. I did too. It's on the phone. website. Okay. Um, you guys may not remember that they said that the bombs were detonated originally using cell phone devices like like a, a cell phone and in the family guy episode that's what they use they show a, he he plays a middle eastern guy uh the boston bomb uh, the boston marathon's being run and there's an explosion in the episode um for time's sake they Two cut out the middle of the episode of the family guy the people online tat and a couple others removed the middle portion of the episode so you didn't have to sit and watch all the bs and you could watch the start and the finish that showed it Bill O'Reilly accused people online of splicing multiple episodes together to get that. And it's not. It's all from the same episode. And they're full of shit on that part of my language, but they are. Um, and that, you know, Tad is right. Bill O'Reilly's just, you know. And that's just one example. The Boston bombing. I mean, here, here's another one. The, um, the Kenyan mall shooting where the whole mall collapsed and uh, – Meanwhile, you've got guys standing off to the side smoking cigarettes while bloody women are running by. I mean, we've got soldiers standing, leaning up against buildings. We've got um, photoshopped evidence of guns. This is all proved. And I'm going to shut up now, and we'll get to the and callers. And we got but- one more thing, too. When you're talking about the, the, the hoax there, the hoax, 
you got the man and the woman walking towards you, a brick wall behind them. And in between them, usually the grill of a Chrysler car or ink behind them. And that's all you see. They forgot to take that part out. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, guys, again, um, it, we are on Skype. In case you don't, if, if you're listening, you hear us breaking up a lot. Uh, we've been having some severe connection problems tonight, specifically for some reason. Maybe something to do with something that I just got posted on my Facebook page, having to do with Microsoft and the Order of the Eastern Star. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. We got some major connection issues going on. Kids, it's a conspiracy. That's right. That's right. Maybe they. Uh, are allocating bandwidth from us over to Asia so that the people that have been kidnapped can get on their phones finally. Oh, brother, guys. Let's take the first caller. We got Greg. Greg is in line. Hello, Greg. Hey, what's going on? Hello, sir. Welcome in. Welcome to the new world order. Yeah. (laughs) How you doing, man? How you you have a good week? Hey. That says you have done very well. Obi Wan has taught you well. <laughs> <laughs> you, for those who don't know what he's talking about, he's talking about the earthquakes. Accurately oh, forecasting yeah. earthquakes. Oh, you you did get your three point six in southern uh, Greece at twenty three twenty eight UT. What? Yeah, you it didn't hit. see that on EMSC. No, I sure didn't. I missed that entirely. Now, we just had a 2.5 on the New Madrid. Boy, no. That's a little one. Oh, you missed it. Well, you're busy, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. This past week, guys, again, I, I tried to juggle real life, working in real life, doing online. Oh, brother, guys, if you knew my real life story, um, man, uh, let's just say you guys might have a little bit of sympathy for what we've been going through. This, um, Greg, last yeah. week. Okay, um, when we were on the air, that 5.2, that there were two 5.2s. One was fake. One right. was, well, not fake. One was an erroneous <laughs> report from the USGS that one happened near you. And then yeah. they moved it. They moved it by, I don't know, what, 300 miles south? They moved it down to Baja? What's going yeah. on? What do you think, man? I can guarantee you that. I don't know what they were doing. And, you know, you had the seismo on that, and it's like, what? I would have felt that. God, it's only 40 miles. Yeah. Heavy movement showing on the chart, but no earthquake reported. And they said it was just a, a false report that their their computers erred or something. But the Europeans <laughs> the Europeans and sensed it. the seismic. Yeah. How do you have a seismic when you said it happened? You have a seismic report, but then is that gone now? Probably is. Um, it's still up. It'll be up. For, it, it, it's a 15-day um, long chart that they have up, so it should be up for the next oh, few days no. still. Yeah, but it's there, you know it's oh. on the charts. There it is. So, you know, an earthquake showing, and they said nothing happened. Nobody and, felt it. That's yeah, the that thing. Fullerton one almost threw me out of the bed when it dropped all the bridges on the. Uh, on the Interstate 5 and the 14 freeways, broke up all those bridges, destroyed a whole bunch of structures, you know, when, blew open. What was this? Which, which earthquake? The Fullerton one. When was that? It was 94, 96? I don't remember now. Like oh, around man. January of 94, 96. Yeah, where 94. the bridges collapsed. Uh, they had a big one in Silmore in 71, then they had that one, you know, like mid, mid-90s and... Just tore up the hell out of Los Angeles. Oh, boy. You know, mid-90s, guys. I was... Um, <laughs> let, let's just put it this way. For those of you who know me in real life, in, in 94, 95, let's see, height of my punk rock days, uh, getting out of high school, going into college to drop out of college. Um, yeah, those were good years. Unfortunately, I wasn't paying any attention to earth changes. And that's when it all started going down with... You know, the man-made manipulation of the environment. We're talking late 80s, mid to late 80s, going into the 90s. And that was at the height of my irresponsible years. <laughs> yeah. that's, what, that's why I'm trying to influence young people now to be more science-minded, to, uh, you know, it's still okay to go have fun and live your life. But learn things. Try to, try to expand your horizons and knowledge in the areas of science. It's, it's important. 
yeah, I did fraternity life. I know exactly what it's like. You know, you talk about Animal House. Yeah, we did that. <laughs> oh, Greg, I'm imagining you in a toga. That, that, this is a, this is a conversation oh, for lies wide a open and Monty. Party once. It was pretty wild. I got everybody totally hammered. I was the social chairman. Oh man, did I make a punch? We called it Green Death Punch. Threw in some dry ice, let it smolder and. Uh, we had like uh, two or three gallons of vodka and a couple of quarts of 151 rum and a bunch of lime green ice cream and some uh, limeade and, uh, you know, a bunch of water and then mixed it all up, mixed up about 10 gallons. Man, we were just annihilated. It was crazy. <laughs> you know, when I think of fraternities, guys, I always think of the classic movie Revenge of the Nerds. And, oh, yeah. uh, you know, I, I if I were to ever have joined a frat, it would have been the equivalent of Lambda, Lambda, Lambda. Uh, they wouldn't no, no one else would have. <laughs> you <taken> nerd. <laughs> hey, hey, Tat, you know, Ogre, you know, I mean, Ogre turned out to be a nerd, man. <laughs> he did. Guys, go look it up. And the alpha betas. Here we go. The alpha betas. The illum- Here's another conspiracy, right? The alpha yeah. betas. The blonde hair, blue eye, uh, rich, white, arrogant pricks. They, they represent, <laughs> even in the movie, they go to the Greek council and the nerds get tarred and feathered. That's what we're talking about here with labeling as conspiracy theories. It's called tar and feather. Same thing. They yeah. show it in several movies, you know. The lambda, 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 of course, forms into the pyramid. And if right. you go look it up, uh, the Lambda Lambdas were all smoking weed, and they were all about partying, and they were the computers. They are the nerds. They're going to have revenge in the end. And where, what did they do? They installed cameras everywhere. <laughs> right? You know, I mean, the, the nerds when he really said did Lambda, get Lambda, 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 I'm sorry, Chrissy. Uh, when he said Lambda, 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 it reminds me of that photograph of the G8 yesterday with all the, uh, with all the uh, Illuminati symbol in the background. It was there. It's in yellow illumination. It has a lambda on the top and then a couple of lambda, you know, just like the pyramid. You know what I'm talking about? The picture of the G8 summit? Still there? I'm oh, sorry, I'm it's muted. Um, um, yeah, I, you're talking about the hologram that they had floating in the middle, right? Yes, that that's was what cre- it was. That was I don't know. I, I didn't really, I didn't bother to read it. I just, I just looked I saw at the a picture video. and laughed. <laughs> and it was like um, five um, pyramid or five triangles that formed a pyramid. It was a hologram floating in the middle. It had a hexagon in the middle. Yeah, but it's sort of like the lambda lambda thing that Dutch was talking about. You know, the lambda, the shape of the lambda. You know, when you have it on a frat house, it's got the. It's just an upside down V, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's V V V upside down. Oh boy, V V V. There we go right. again. Um, I made a post on my Facebook page, guys. You got to go over and check it out having to do with the cost of a computer. The comp- this is just something most people might not know. This is You want to talk conspiracies? MSNBC, are you listening up? Microsoft and MSNBC? <laughs> okay. The cost of a first computer made by Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, and Wozniak was $666.66. Yeah. Sold at yeah. Radio Shack as a kit, the Apple One, 666 the apple with a bite out of it. Okay? That is a conspiracy. <laughs> Confirmed. Yeah. Okay, now they the said... The forbidden fruit. <laughs> right, the forbidden fruit, the knowledge. FF, forbidden fruit. There we go again. The um, the explanation that gives... Colors is the next one, too. You is broke down classic. the colors? This, the explanation that they give for why they chose 666, they said Wozniak just likes repeating numbers so they just you know <laughs> just chose 666.66 out of randomness because Wozniak likes the repeating numbers yeah <laughs> yeah so yeah. that's a conspiracy for you guys right there it's probably a child molester too no doubt oh gosh we won't even say that uh you know i oh, uh, there's no way to know uh, only confirmed information that we will repeat I know, i'm just i'm just screwing around <laughs> hey but, uh yeah, Aloha, so, Stacy is uh, come to Porterville, which is about an hour's drive from me north. So she just she just flew in this morning and drove up from LAX. So she's oh, settling in at her folks old folks homes and uh, you know getting settled in there and getting her 
Wi-Fi and all that stuff set up today. So anyway, she's wow. exhausted. I just talked to her. So. Oh, cool. Well, wow. Well, welcome back to the lower 48. Uh, yeah. Welcome back to hell. She comes back every year to make sure the house is doing good, you know. Oh, wow. Well, we'll have to get in touch at some point. I know I dropped the ball just trying to get a hold of everybody with yeah, everything she's else. she's a little going. disappointed because she was telling our friends that she was going to make all those tests, you know. Yeah, and yeah, like, I know, I know. And, you know, this is something that I... Okay. You know, I know you're busy, you know. Yeah, I, it's been it's been crazy. Um, <laughs> and the more and the more people start watching what you do, they want they want all the answers. And they want it now. <laughs> oh yeah, you're, yeah. Oh, and God. you're one of them. Yeah, I know it. <laughs> Chad, how it's you doing, good. Chrissy? How you doing, Chrissy? All right. I'm sorry. I had to mute. My dogs were going psycho. Oh, that's okay. I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Good. Tat, you? I've been I'm writing, doing, you, man. but I'm you doing. never seem to respond on Facebook. Maybe you hate to read that stuff. <laughs> uh, man. Hey. Yeah, I do a lot of research, dude, and I've been. Yeah, I know, I understand. And I've been working at work. I've been, I ain't been able to do any research. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. Very little, very little, and when I got a special minute or two, I'm researching. So, mm -hmm. you know, I just don't have time. I'm sorry, buddy. No, I'm not I, sometimes okay. I, I get time, to but sometimes I don't. I did or see something. one of your posts today. Something about you don't have the, to respond either. It's just so I know that you know you might because I have a few things that I'm saying that might be of significance to you. So, well, I try to look over them. I, I don't get to respond to them, but I have looked over a few, uh, especially if it, you got a link in there. I I, I do look at it um, or try to. Now I know I ain't got none of this week, but I have in the past. I do look at them. Yeah. Unless it's something I've already seen. <laughs> I see. I got it. I'm not upset. <clears throat> I appreciate what you do. You did great work, man. All you guys do great work. Oh, Greg, thank you, man. You know, I mean, that's why we, the reason we do it is we're trying to get through to everyone. And when we get actually somebody who cares, um, somebody who wants to get involved like you have, I mean, <laughs> this is why we do it. I mean, yeah. this is why I do the radio show so I can talk. You know, I've been in the fire. We got before. a minute and a half to I don't break. Don't care what happens to me now. I'm I'm kind of upset the way things are going, and it's going to get a lot worse than this. They're going to get bad. Mm, yep. Tat, what did you say? I say it's going to get bad. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. Things are going to get worse um, unless we actually all take a proactive step to do something. We got one minute to break. Okay, okay. Um, Greg. Thank you for calling in. I appreciate it, brother. Um, okay. We will talk to you next week, hopefully, or this week. Okay, we're talking over each other. Uh, go ahead and go to another caller. Appreciate all you guys' work, and uh, you know, we'll just talk to you later. Maybe uh, Chrissy, you think you'll be up and running on your regular system, or or is FPRN just going to be down for a while? Um, I it, you can listen on the other streaming servers. I shared it on my Facebook page. Okay. Um, hopefully, we're trying to get it back up, but technical yeah. issues, you know. Yeah, I know. They take a long time, especially if you've been attacked. <laughs> yeah. Te technical <laughs> issues have dominated the scene tonight, however, guys. And um, you can call in after the break, 567-314-9296. Again, 567-314-9296, guys. Word up. We'll be back after the break. Do you have a group or orchestra? your host, Dutch Sins. Tattoo and Chrissy Sumer here with me. We've been going for an hour and a half. Time now, 8.35 p.m. Central Time on the 28th of March. Here in the springtime, but it's still snowing across half the country, ironically. You know, for the last hour and a half now, we've been talking about every kind of craziness under the sun, mostly doing with conspiracy theories and why we keep getting labeled as such. You know, Greg brought uh, some good points to the call, uh, from the call. And while he was talking, a smaller earthquake just struck on the New Madrid earthquake uh, seismic zone, just south of me, St. Louis, Missouri, about 100 miles south. 
We were watching for that. It's just a small earthquake, but it's a sign that overall movement's occurring. Don't want to go back down the earthquake tunnel. Just wanted to make you aware that happened. Guys, we've got another caller on the phone. It is Garrett. Garrett, are you there? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear Hello? you. No, I did All right. I have one little message that I just want to get across. Well, really, it's a question. You guys have thousands of thousands of followers, right? Supposedly, well, yes. Supposedly, yes. <laughs> then why is it that only a handful of people only actually bother to do the research and come up with information? Good question. We don't know. We've been try- I, We've been asking that for ourselves for a long time. I've got a theory. I call it the silver platter theory. People want it brought to them on a silver platter. The news, all the information, all the links, all the research, everything that you found, everything that you learned, tell it to them so they don't have to do it. And you know what? These are the same people that walk well, around call, calling other people sheeple. And then they watch videos and then they, they don't bet their sources or do the research themselves to make sure the information is correct. So they're believing everything, just they're becoming the sheeple that they say other people are. They're followers, not leaders. Leaders do not do that. Leaders do their own research, they find out the truth. A follower repeats bogus information. And I'm, I don't mean that in a disrespected way to anyone, but that's true. You can't blame people. Um, it's what we're all taught how to do from the time that we're young children up into college. How well can you parrot back what someone else figured out? That's it. That's the point of life for most people. And, you know, some people, they work, they have kids, they maybe don't have the time to do the research, too. Yeah, so. yeah. Personally, I believe everyone that listens and tunes in has a responsibility to research and find stuff on their own, just like you do. And then it's not just all coming from you and Tat. Then it's nothing but a pool of knowledge going back and forth. You can accept it and then source it out to thousands of more people instead of just finding it out on your own. That would be ten you know, times better. You know, Garrett, um, I've, I've raised this question on the phone with Tat and Chrissy before. You guys should hear me bitching up a storm. Tat telling me to shut the F up and all kinds of I stuff because I'm, compl- I'm complaining all the time, right? And um, here I am. I'm like, you know, there's 7.5 or 7 billion people on the planet, and I'm the only one who covers fucking fracking earthquakes. Are you effing shitting me? Where is the world? And here I am screaming on the phone to them, you know, the sympathetic ear preaching to the choir about where are the rest of the people, man? Like, come on. Am I the only person who ever noticed fracking is causing earthquakes and started to take screenshots of it? Yeah, I am. Out of 7 billion people, there's no one else on the planet doing it. And we've learned one thing. If you got the word, I'm going to scare the living hell out of you. You'll watch the video. But if we tell you that, hey, this is where we can fix our problem, you run the other way. And that's a fact. Jack. Yeah, if you give it a a sensational title, you don't even need to be talking about what's in the title. Just give it something crazy and people will will watch it. It's, It's kind of the people's fault. We did that. Hey, we did the experiment just a few days ago with the Yellowstone thing and the animal thing. And I said, look, you watch. Just because it mentions animals, everyone's going to go ape shit. And they did. And I was butthurt offended. Again, ask Tad or Chrissy, guys. Here I am behind the scenes going, God, man, facepalm. I cannot believe that everybody's sharing this. Meanwhile, I'm giving away inventions to the world last week that could change the freaking world. Yeah, 600 you know, downloads or whatever, 1,000 downloads off the website. Hardly any views. But here comes Yellowstone Bison. Oh, my God. What? Get your coffee. Yeah, that's just like in the Boston bombing. I said that that guy that <clears> – <throat> I can't remember that guy's name. I never can remember his name. But the guy 
guy that was supposed to punch Jesse Ventura in the face in a bar <laughs> fight, and it was really Chris a hoax. Kyle. But anyway, he he ended up dying. I actually mismatched his face with the the guy that I found that kind of similarly looked like him. And I said in the video, I said there's no conclusive evidence to say that this is him, but it does have a resemblance of looking like him. And it did. And it went it went pretty much viral. And I th I thought it was going to be a bomb video. I really did. But it went viral. I didn't mean for it to. But it did. It's all in how you present it. And even if you're trying to tell the exact truth about what you find, if you find something in the video that is questionable, it's like it goes extremely viral. It's like YouTube or Google or whoever takes the stuff and puts it at the top of the rating or something. I don't know what it is, but it just goes batshit. It really does. Yeah. And it happens over and over again. I mean, we see it time and time again. And um, I got to say something. We got 18 minutes and we got two more callers. All right, let's I'm get sorry. to the next caller. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Our next caller is Julio. And I think this is Julio, our intrepid reporter. Julio, are you there? Uh, good evening, everyone. How are you? Hello. Hello. Thank you for calling in again, bro. Hello. Haven't talked to you in a minute. How are you doing? Oh, doing well. Doing well. Um, good, great show. Uh, the last caller was, uh, was real spot on. In his, uh, in his points, uh, a quick story real, real fast, then I'll get to what you guys were talking about uh, during the broadcast. Now, I went down for a, a job interview down uh, in central Illinois, and I took the, uh, I took the train, and uh, I'm at Chicago's Union Station, and uh, I'm, I'm going to get set to get on the train. I got my bag. I've got a bag of popcorn. And out of nowhere, I see TSA agents take me to the side and want to search my bag. Now, uh, if, if people follow me on Twitter at JN Reports, you can check my YouTube page. You know, I, I reported on TSA at Union Station two years ago, searching people's bags, uh, Amtrak riders, uh, on July 5th, 2012, the day after Independence Day. And uh, here, here it is again. This was uh, Wednesday. I'm leaving to downstate Illinois. And TSA wants to search my bags, and uh, you know I was uh, I was not down for that. I was uh, you know pretty nervous. I was trying to keep my cool, and luckily you know I had an electronic ticket, and it wasn't uh, showing up on my phone. I wasn't getting service down down in the tunnels of Union Station. And I told these TSA agents, "We're like, look, uh, I, I got a." get a real ticket here. I'm going to miss my train. I got 10 minutes. And they're like, no, we got to search your bags. I'm like, that's not happening. And they like swapped my bag. They tested it, you know, for explosives, you know, because there's terrorists everywhere. And uh, luckily it came out clean. You know, I'm a domestic, you know, people say, you know, everyone's a domestic extremist these days. So luckily the bag came out clear and they didn't search my bag. I come today back from downstate to Chicago and I see TSA again and this time I filmed them, filmed them searching people's bags. Uh, it was from just a, just a bit of a distance away. But I, I, I videotaped it. I'm going to do a, a video report on there. And uh, this isn't reported on the news. Chicago is the third largest media market in the country, and it's not reported anywhere. It's not saying, hey, heads up, TSA is going to be searching people's bags at unionization. Not a peep. Not a peep. And, again, I, rec I, I reported on this in 2012. No media reports, only uh, uh, Huffington Post. Uh, you know, I did a video for We Are Change, and it got up to the Huffington Post in Chicago and even to the Huffington Post website. So no one's really reporting this. And, again, they're searching people's bags. I'm pretty sure it's happening in other cities throughout the U.S. If not, you know, it's, uh, something, something's up in Chicago. And, and for those of the viewers and listeners who don't know, guys, Julio, again, two years ago, he got – explicitly harassed by the TSA after he recorded them at, I, it was at the same place, right? It was at the, was it the bus station or the train station yeah. two years ago? Train station, Union Station in Chicago. Union Station in Chicago. And, and you can imagine this gigantic um, area. It, it's a huge train station. And I mean, it really is a, a Union Station in downtown Chicago. 
And up until recently, TSA was not involved with the searching of passengers there. I mean, why would they need to? There's tens of thousands of people passing through, getting on the metro trains, getting on the Amtrak trains, and now they're there. Julio made well, note of I it. got something to tell you. The NFL football games, they're getting ready to, to orchestrate that too. They already got pat-downs and wands. They, they scan you before you go in. And you have to, if you bring anything in, it has to be in a clear bag so they can see in it. No joke. Yep. Yeah. In Major League Baseball this uh, this spring, you know, opening days like this Monday, Dutch here in St. Louis, that's like, you know, baseball heaven. There's going to be mm-hmm. metal detectors. I know for sure in Detroit, uh, there's going to be metal detectors throughout baseball stadiums uh, nationwide. Uh, but yeah, this is, uh, you know, this is, this is quite interesting again. I'm seeing Union State. I'm seeing TSA agents at Union Station. It's not. The, it's not the full body pat downs yet. And I say yet, all caps, yet. But it's going to get there if we don't do anything about this. And uh, it's you know it's again no one's reporting this in the media in Chicago. And you know it's expected uh, that they don't. So I found it interesting. I know, I know you're pressed on time. I want to be brief here. You talked about Cass Sunstein, right? So he was Obama's former information czar. His wife is Samantha Power, who is the ambassador to the United Nations, literally trying to get us into the third uh, great war here. Uh, So Cass Sunstein and his wife, they're very powerful people here. So, you know, again, he was the information czar. He wrote a white paper, I believe at Harvard or the University of Chicago, which is a very elitist school, uh, just uh, just south of downtown, uh, Sunstein wrote a, a white paper talking about infiltrating basically alternative media, infiltrating uh, you know uh, groups, you know media groups online, and do, you know infiltrating uh, in, in various different ways through bots, through you know uh, through, you know double agents or whatnot. Sunstein wrote this. You can you can read the white paper online. So the interviewer, right? Her name was Alex Witt on MSNBC. MSNBC, we know they got bailout money. Her fiance literally works at the White House. So we really got paid propaganda going on here. And it's happening nationwide. On the Drudge Report, they talked about Valerie Jarrett, who uh, is a very big elitist. Her family has ties to intelligence. Uh, she is one of uh, the president's uh, key advisors. She's going to Hollywood to try to literally inspire insert propaganda into your shows. If, if your shows aren't already propaganda, it's going to get a lot worse as Valerie Jarrett's pimping Obamacare in scripts on television and in future movies. Uh, so, it, you know, it's going to happen. Uh, it's, it, it's, it's outrageous. And you then, just blew um, my mind, Julio. You, Guys, you are, say gonna, I think it's already happening. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Julio, you just blew my mind oh, yeah. with what you told me about... Again, this is the clip that we were stopping and starting, guys, and going through. The interviewer on MSNBC and Cass Sunstein. Now, real quick, this is why Julio is the intrepid reporter that he is, guys. This is why Julio deserves to pull in some kind of salary. If you can, donate to Julio at JN Reports. You can find him on Twitter. I'm sure he'll have his his crowdfunding uh, option up there. Julio needs support from the community and we need more people like Julio who are willing to travel and talk on the radio and find out the hard to find information you know he's doing this out of his own pocket out of his own time and he just let me know something that I didn't know and Chrissy didn't know and Tat didn't know which was walker.com sorry on on walker.com one last thing there's uh, an article where some guy I can't I can't even think of his name I'm so I'm so disgusted right now this guy is literally saying to arrest all, quote, climate deniers. So if you're against the, the literally, you want to talk about conspiracy theories, if you want to believe in, believe in this myth that us humans and cows shit, pardon my French, but if you want to believe that cow shit and us breathing is literally creating massive storms throughout uh, the entire country, you, you're literally, uh, you're, you're, you're done for, okay? This guy is literally calling for arresting all climate deniers because we are going to prevent, or we're going to be held accountable for extreme weather and extreme events that are going to happen because we aren't uh, 
we aren't we aren't literally giving into this carbon basis. So we're not, we're, you know, we're not we're, we're not going to get involved with Agenda 21. And my thing is, I'm against geoengineering. How about we arrest all all, all the people advocating geoengineering? How about we arrest those? Who are literally doing weather mod programs? I, Dutch, I, I send you documents every day. Uh, you know, not mm -hmm. every day, but you know, w when I get a chance, it goes mm -hmm. back to fifty nine, nineteen fifty nine. NASA admits this. Well, why don't we arrest them? No, instead they're, they're going to talk about arresting climate deniers. This stupid myth, and people want to you know believe in fake snow. No, we we need to, just read the article. It's on Gawker. I don't want to. I don't want to rant. Oh, they're, you're they're fine. You know, you know, arresting um, climate deniers. I'm going to quote Bill Clinton here. How dare you? How dare, How dare you? you to say 9-11 was an inside job? <laughs> How dare you question the establishment? <laughs> I got to say something. Quo. We got eight minutes, and we got one more caller. Oh. Right, okay. One last thing. The CFR told me that the president does admit that the president will endorse geoengineering programs, but not publicly yet. We got some loser saying to arrest climate deniers. Come on, folks. Put... Put the facts, type, go to, to the Google, type in geoengineering PDF, solar radiation management PDF. You will find a gold mine, a treasure chest of documents that we can expose these people. Have a good night, guys. Hey, don't go nowhere, Julio. Gu 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 I'm sorry. I thought we had another color. We do not. You're, you're good to go. So stay here. Oh, oh they, 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 they terminate off. Guys, I'll tell you what. Oh. Julio is absolutely right. Um, he has sent me some information. Um, what he'll do. And anybody can do this if you know how to do the appropriate search. First things first, you got to know the terms to search. You go search chemtrails, you're going to get godlike productions and a bunch of other weird conspiracy sites. But you go search solar radiation management or you go search cloud seeding, aerosols, and you'll start to find that we have been lied to for the last 20, 30, maybe even 50 years going back to the 1950s on weather modification. The trails that you are seeing above your head, whether they're coming from a jetliner that's American Airlines or whether it's coming from a cloud seeding specific aircraft, there's no doubt that a plane is flying over and leaving a long lasting cloud that lingers and forms and rains down upon us. I Best got case. something to say about that. What's up? I work, I work where my company is, where I work, is not too far from one of the bases in Jacksonville, Florida. And it's right over the flight path of where the planes land. And this is a prop plane, okay? It's got propellers on it. It's a big one, but it's a, got propellers. It flew over my company, and I was there. I could not get my camera to come on quick enough to get it because they, it, they're flying so low at that point that they go by really fast. But when he went by on the end of the wings... He sprayed something, and if I'd have caught that, y'all would have seen it for you for yourself. And this is not a jet engine. This was a diesel prop plane or jet or airplane fuel engine, and it was spraying stuff out of the wings as it went by us at like 200, maybe maybe 250 feet above the ground. And I really tried to catch it on camera, but it was just really too fast. You know, here, here's another, um, and this is straight to MSNBC and the people calling us conspiracy theorists. Um, for the longest time, weather modification was filed under conspiracy theory. Now, here in 2014, the U.S. government has approved a company called Desert Research Institute, DRI, based out of... Uh, Reno, Nevada, to do drone cloud seeding. No longer are we going to be having to worry about jetliners flying over or airplanes with pilots in them. They are perfecting the technology via drone, propeller, and jet drone to spray 24-7, 365, whenever they need to, without a person involved up in the air. That's confirmed. That's on my website. We have the Weather Channel putting that out. So, you know, back to conspiracies, this whole broadcast. Chrissy, first of all, thanks for listening to me and Tat sit here and bitch up a storm about, well, everything we always talk about on the phone. Anyways, but, you know, this, this whole thing leads me to one final point. To be a conspiracy theorist is okay. 
as long as the conspiracies that you're theorizing are proved. A theory becomes a theory after it's first an idea, then a hypothesis, and after it's proved, then it becomes the proved fact. scientific fact. In between fact and fiction lies theory. So if you're a conspiracy theorist, it's okay. You get to the bottom of it and you determine what is true and what is not. I'm here to tell you, Bigfoot ain't real, guys. Loch Ness Monster ain't real. I'm sorry. UFOs, most likely military, not little gray guys. Now, they could be, but, you know, I mean, we can go down the list of weird conspiracies and debunk each one for, for the obvious reasons. But I could also tell you that if there's a Bigfoot story that appears in the news, you better watch out for a false flag. That if you hear about a UFO story, you might want to look into the government and what they're doing. That there's truth that is the basis and foundation point for a lot of conspiracy. JFK really was shot, guys. Really, I promise you, he was. Now the question is whether or not GE paid for it. <laughs> right? I mean, so, you know, it's okay. It's okay to be a conspiracy theorist. No matter how many times they try to smear you as being this weirdo who has wacko ideas, a lot of conspiracies have been tr proved true. Watergate. Watergate, man. They called, they called those people conspiracy theorists before it was proved true. They still try to th throw that under the bus as being a conspiracy. Yeah. But it's but, proven. It's, it's a fact. <laughs> but there are some just downright ridiculous conspiracies out there. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. So I guess you have to reptilians. have no shame in being a conspiracy theorist, but it, when, the, when there's – pay attention to the facts. You have to be open-minded to be debunked, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and if you do get debunked, don't get butt hurt. I mean, right. if you, it, it's just that it's not true. You find out it's not true, then make a statement. It's not true, guys. If I you're made a, truther, a mistake. The truth is important. Yeah. Look what happened to us with that Twitter thing and the um, Sandy Hook. Oh. You know, Tat and I found found these tweets. We're like, look, the tweets are, are previous, and and we had to eat crow, but we did. Okay, yeah, I mean, we, we, the point we, is, is we that made we, it right. we, we came back out and said we were wrong and we made videos saying it and we and we still I'm still catching hell from that one dude. We won't mention his name over it. So why do we do it? Why do we why? Why do I allow myself to be labeled a conspiracy theorist across international news? Michael Janich, conspiracy theorist, because what I'm reporting to, I truly believe. Guys. Thank you for listening. Tune in next week. Chrissy, Tat, thanks. And FPRN, you guys rock. Tune in for Lies Wide Open. It's coming up in just a little bit here on FPRN. Lies Wide Open, the other sister show worth listening to. Cheers, guys. And remember one other thing. Abolish the Act 18-7 and from my cold, dead hands. Damn right. Thank you.